Welcome to the last and final lesson for the Shopify course. I really hope that you guys enjoyed your journey up until now. And just because this course is reaching its end, that doesn't mean that the same thing is happening to your dropshipping adventure. In fact, quite the opposite. And I'm sure that you guys already know that, but you're just in the beginning. But I really do hope that this course really helped you understand how to create that store that you always wanted, how to conduct product research and find the right products that you can dropship and how to market your store successfully so that you can get your product out to the right audience and start hitting those sales. Whether you're sold up until now is really not relevant. What matters is that you learned and that you implemented and that is worth much more than that ad or two or three that you ran, whether it made a sale or not. You're investing in your future and you are definitely headed the right way. Now, in this bonus lesson, I want to give you guys some more pointers so you can fine tune your stores even more and start off with a bigger bang right after this course. So let's head back to our Shopify dashboards and let's see a few more cool things. On the left menu, click on analytics. And here is where you're going to see analytics for your store, which means just about every bit of information that you can get on those people that are entering your store. How many people came to my store today? How many of those people that came to my store are returning customers? How many added items to their carts, but they didn't check out, or maybe they did. Where are those people from? The ones that are coming to my site, which countries are they coming from? All of your customers, demographics and behavior, you will be able to find on the analytics side of your Shopify dashboard. And this is really, really important because once you learn your audience, you'll definitely know how to reach out to them with better promotions and better products for what they're looking for. And as you can see on the left side, you have your dashboard, which is what I'm seeing here. You have your reports, which is a detailed report of everything that happened in the last week or the last month or so forth in your store and a live view of what's happening right now in your store. How many visitors are in your store right now and what exactly are they doing? You can simply learn a lot from your customer's behavior and use that to your advantage. So check out the analytics for your customer behavior. Next on the left side, click on discounts. Now this is where you can create a promotion code for the viewers in your website. If you create a discount code, just click over here on create discount code. What you can do here is give a name to your discount code and then your customers can use that promo code on your website when checking out to get some kind of a discount. For example, let's make an end of the year discount code, for example. So let's say that we're at the end of the year right now and we want to make a Christmas discount for our customers. So let's make a code called Christmas Dogs 10, for example, because I want to give them 10%. Then you can choose the type of discount that you want to give to them in a percentage, a fixed amount, buy X, get Y, which means buy two, get one free, for example, or buy 10, get two free or whatever you want to configure there. Then the value, how much of a discount you want to give using the type above. So in my example, I want to give a 10% discount to anyone who uses this discount code. So I'm going to give it a 10% discount value, then applies to all products or a specific product or a specific collection. I'm going to leave it as is minimum requirements. If you want some requirement from your customer before getting the discount, I'm going to leave that as it is customer eligibility. I want to give this discount to everyone usage limits. If you want to limit to one per customer or make any other limit that you want, I'm going to leave it as it is and set a start and end date for this promotion. I want to keep it ongoing, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Keep these settings and click on save discount code. Now I can use this discount code and write it on my Facebook ads. For example, for anyone who uses this promotion, you'll get 10% off anything on our website. You can also write the same thing on the announcement bar on the top of your site. If you remember from a few lessons ago, let's go back to the site to show you, for example. So I'm talking about this announcement bar up here. So you can write end of the year promo. 10% off anyone who uses this special promo code xmixdogs10 and that will do the job. Your customers will see that there's an extra discount. Everybody loves a good discount and using these discount codes is one of those ways to do it. So that's another bonus tip that I have for you guys. Let's move on to the next. Click on online store, then click on preferences and here you have the title and meta description. Now, what is a title and meta description? Because you already have a title for your homepage and you already have a description of, you know, who you are, you have your about us page. So where is this going to show and who is going to see this? A meta title and description 
is kind of like a hidden title and a hidden description that you will not be seeing inside your website. But if you share your website, for example, on WhatsApp or on Facebook Messenger or other chat platforms, notice that when you paste a link, you're also going to get a link preview of the link that you are sending that person. So your recipient will see the link's address, but they'll also see a title and a description on that message that you sent them. But once they click on that website, they won't see that title and description again inside the website. So it's something that you're seeing before you enter the website. You can also see it on Google search when you search for anything and you see the website's results. So when you're seeing those search results on Google search page, you're actually seeing the meta titles and meta descriptions. Once you enter that site, you could see a whole bunch of different information that was different from what you saw before. So you do need a homepage title and a description for the meta description for people who are searching for your site before they enter it, you want to show them some good information about your site. So on the homepage title, let's write doggy dog club because well, that's the title of my store. And then the homepage meta description, your one stop shop for all dog lovers, spoil your dogs with our special high quality collection of pet products made specifically for your dog. So you can write anything, get creative, work on this for a couple of minutes. I'm just showing you guys a quick example. Next, you can also add your Google Analytics account. If you don't have one, it's easy to create one. Just go to Google, write down Google Analytics on the search, create your analytics account. It doesn't cost any money. And then you'll get a code from analytics to paste inside this text box over here. Once you paste that code and click on save, you'll be able to track your audience's behavior just as I've showed you on the analytics button over here on the left, just in a much more sophisticated way with much more audience behaviors and more information on your audiences. This is something that you can go ahead and do right now. It is not only at an advanced stage. Once again, Shopify's analytics is great but Google's analytics is going to get you much more in-depth information. So once again, really quick, there's no need to demonstrate it because it's as simple as it sounds. Go to Google analytics, create your free account. At the end of the account creation, you'll get a unique code to paste over here. Click on save and that is it. Go back to your analytics and start analyzing what's going on in your store. And that is another pointer regarding Google analytics. So that is everything that I want you guys to do on the preferences page of your online store. So on our website, we are writing blogs all of the time on everything that's going on on Shopify and on the dropshipping world in general. Let me show you a quick example of some blogs that we have on Shopify. Top five low budget marketing tricks to market your Shopify stores. We are talking here about exactly what the title says. We also have Facebook ads over here and a few more low budget marketing tricks to get customers to your store. Another blog is why you should use American suppliers on your Shopify dropshipping business. We already talked about it in this course, but you have a full depth blog on this subject. Another one is 10 ways to increase your product page conversions for your Shopify stores by using all kinds of special methods that are used today by the top marketers worldwide. Next, you have another blog called e-commerce upselling, how to boost Shopify sales and increase your profits using upselling. Upselling is one of the greatest techniques to add more products to your cart and increase your average order value. That way you're going to make more profits using cross-selling and upselling techniques. All of that in this in-depth blog that you have over here. And as you can see, there's also Shopify apps, which we recommend to install to help you with the cross-selling and upselling. And as you can see, these blogs are really deep and they're full of rich information that we are doing only for you guys. So use that to your advantage because it doesn't cost you any money and it's giving you a heck of a lot of knowledge, which is worth a whole lot of money. And as you know, a lot of people are paying top dollar to learn about what you learned in this free Shopify course that we created for you guys. Here's another article on how to get and improve product images for your Shopify stores to boost your sales. And here we're going over everything that has to do with product images. And believe me, there's a lot that you can do with your product images in your store. I couldn't get into all of this in-depth information in this course because then it would have been too long. But we did go over all of the important things so that everything will be optimized in your store and so that you can already start selling while on a budget. Well, guys, that's pretty much everything that I have for you regarding this Shopify course how to get your store started, even if you have no technical skills up until this point where you already have a store running and you made it this far. If you guys have any questions about this course, 
about Shopify in general, about our system, or anything else that you have your mind on, let us know, let me know, and we will be more than happy to get back to you guys and let you guys know what's up. We really want to see you guys succeed. The best that we can do is offer you all of the tools that you need to go and get started. And that is exactly what we did in this course. So best of luck on your dropshipping journey. Stay connected to our blogs to learn about product finding methods and suppliers and everything about the dropshipping industry in general. And I'll see you guys in the future blogs and videos where you are going to continue learning and implementing your way to success.